you're watching Studio Ken. Make sure you don't miss any episode of Studio Ken by subscribing to the YouTube channel. To subscribe, search for Studio Ken on YouTube, click subscribe on the bottom right of your screen and set a reminder. You can also watch Studio Ken on Diamond TV on Wednesday at 18.30 and on Saturday at 19 hours. Studio Ken, the home of Kennedy Gondway on YouTube. To err is human, to forgive is divine. So goes one of the most powerful teachings about forgiveness. The Christian faith teaches us that we are all sinners and encourages forgiveness. But what would happen if someone killed their own children? Although these teachings dominate our formative stages, forgiveness is easier said than done especially when one kills another person. Raw emotions run high, and all that many demand is justice, or an eye for an eye, if you like. Today, Studio Ken visits Mukoveko Maximum Correctional Facility to bring to you the story of one man who killed two of his children. Pempanizulu, aged 48, was sentenced to death by hanging until pronounced dead. But his sentence has now been commuted to life by President Edgar Chagwalungu. Hi, this is Inok Mepu, and you're watching Studio Ken. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you very much for allowing us to interview you on Studio Ken. Studio Ken. Nezofnochita find out. Why did you kill your children? The reason I killed the children was um, not intentional. Uh, so what happened? We had a fight with my wife. My wife ran away with uh, both our children. One of the kids was in school and... Um, I followed my wife to go and get the, the children um, with the reason that uh, one of them was in school. That is how I was given those children as my wife had gone to Luangwa Fera at her mother's place. So when I got home with the children, I was, I was just alone. Um, and in the house, I had some uh, few hours. I um, uh, booked a vehicle for some business uh, that I used to do. So happened that I put the fuel in the house, which um, I had forgotten uh, about, and um, went to have a beer. So in the night, when I came back home from my uh, drink, I wanted to light a cigarette uh, with matches. It is uh, upon lighting my cigarette that uh, the fuel um, was ignited, and that is how um, the accident happened in which I... Uh, killed those uh, two children. But, uh, but a competent court found you guilty of killing your children based on the evidence before it. And therefore, I don't know whether what you are saying is true or not. Based on court, I cannot refuse because I was found guilty. When the accident happened, I failed to report the matter. Instead, I ran to my sister's farm. The accident occurred on the 18th, and I was found um, on the 27th. So due to the period of days in between, it looked like I had killed the children intentionally and ran to the farm. But in So why did you run away instead of reporting the matter to the police? Because I was afraid. Uh, I was afraid of, of, of mob justice as there was a group of people that came. Uh, my friend had a vehicle at, uh, at the time and so he's the one that uh, aided my escape. Despite these claims, the Lusaka High Court in 2013 found Zulu guilty of killing his children after a quarrel with his wife by setting ablaze the house they were in. According to the judgment, before burning them, he fetted them with beef and beer while telling them that that was their last day. He then poured petrol on their bodies and locked the house before setting it ablaze through the window. After killing the children, 
Zulu fled and later pounced on his mother-in-law and other relatives whom he hacked and were admitted to the hospital. Why were you keeping petrol in the house? I used to book a car to go and ferry goods. Um, and the fuel is what uh, I would uh, use. But on that particular day, I had forgotten that I had put fuel in the house. You say the petrol you were keeping in your house was your line of business. How could you honestly forget that you were keeping petrol in the house? I was drunk, and that is how I forgot. How old were the children? One was uh, four years, and the other was uh, six years. When you look back on the day that your children died, how do you feel? Even here where I am, in my heart, I don't feel good because it was bad. I lost my God-given children. They were gifts, and looking at my age now, those children could have managed to, to keep me. And it, is so, it, it so happened that I killed my own children. So at my age, I always complain to myself that who will look after me? There's no one who will keep you because when you were found guilty, you were sentenced to death by hanging. But the sentence was later commuted to life. So the fact is that you are supposed to be saving life. When you reflect at everything that happened, what's the greatest lesson you have learned? What I've learned in here over the uh, wrongs I did, I learned to uh, go to church because when I was out there, I forgot about church. So I've learned that um, what I did was wrong and I have uh, sworn and confessed my wrongdoings. This is what I've learned in here. It's, it's wrong to commit a crime. And over the years that I have been in here, I have been praying to God in confession um, for my crime. So I, I only ask for forgiveness from God and the people because the children I killed are not mine alone, but for the country. And I confess that I brought the country backwards in development by my crime. So my uncles What was the reaction of your children's aunties and uncles after you killed your children? What's your relationship with them? My father was very upset. He too complained about the fact that uh, I was going to jail and uh, had no one to look after him because I had killed his grandchildren. We did not communicate over time until recently when um, his phone number was sent to me. We spoke and I asked for forgiveness from him. Uh, I last spoke to him um, last year, uh, in December 2020. How about their mother? Are you on talking terms? The mother to my children? Oh no, I don't even have the address where the mother of the children lives. When is the last time you saw her? The last time I saw her was in 2012 in October. Where did you see her from? When she was coming to court. So what was her testimony in court? She was telling the court uh, how she ran away and the way I got the children from Fera, bringing them back home. Um, that is what uh, she testified in court. What do you think would happen if you met the mother of your late children? Ah, uh, with me, there's no problem. But I don't know to her side. We have never seen each other ever since I was sentenced. I don't have a problem with her, as I am the one in the wrong, and all I ask is for her to forgive me. 
kai do do bakali pe be be bana ma jaba non nunka budar pe be jamini ti datan ta so ene ni pe mba otiba ni kururuki ani kururuki de ni nala kwa ima mukaona cha lo monga muno mzambia do people like you deserve forgiveness in a country like zambia If I confess and plead guilty, the only thing I can do is to ask for forgiveness from the state. And the state has the power to forgive or not. Sure. The two children that you killed were from your second wife. But you have five other children from your first marriage. What has been the reaction from the other five children? From the time they came with my sister to visit me at the correctional facility in um, 2012 of October, I have never seen them. My sister, who is not in school, is the one looking after those children. I wouldn't know um, what their thoughts are, as we have not spoken. The Zambia Correctional Service has been running Restorative Justice, a program that's aimed at reconciling offenders with those that they offend. Samuel Kapandula is a Senior Assistant Commissioner in the Zambia Correctional Service. He is also the Assistant Director in the Corrections and Extension Services Directorate. When prisoners come in these various facilities, our main interest is not that they have been forsaken by society, but they have to be reformed, rehabilitated. And then when we prepare them for successive reintegration back in their communities, they should make peace with people they have offended out there. When they come here, we don't look at them as um, just uh, beings that do not have feelings, beings that will never go back to society, no. Our focus is to reform them, make them law-abiding citizens when they return into society. We've just been watching the story of uh, Pempanizolo. Right as that might be from your side, the fact is that he killed his children. What are some of the challenges that you face in reconciling people that have offended others? Um, you know, we are... <clears throat> crime has been committed, people still remain bitter, their hearts are bleeding. So you have all those challenges to come to terms with those that have been offended. Sometimes they've felt they can never forgive and they would rather want to see the offender just go for good in prison and never come out of the prison. So having um, killed his own children, like you heard from uh, his sentiments, he indicated that he feels so remorseful about whatever that happened. He still pits himself that he wishes he would have not done that. And his, in his explanation, he did mention that um, it was done out of alcohol influence or something like that, which to me, yes, sounds as an excuse, but a crime was committed. But now he feels He's come back to his senses and he still seeks for help in a way or so. Probably if chance allows, if he could still be uh, pardoned. What do you remember about your late children? What I remember about those children, I used to love those kids. And that is why I was even taking them to school. I cry a lot when I think about them day and night. Because they are the ones I used to live with at home. I complain day and night about those children. They are the ones I was close to. Do you have their pictures? The pictures of the children remained with the court. When they were taken, this other one lived for about three days before he passed on, and the other one died on the spot. The one who died at the hospital was photographed, and those are the pictures that are with the court. Kupempera, how many times do you pray in a day? In one day, I pray twice. Early in the morning, we have devotion. 
and in the evening before supper, we pray. Then, on Sundays, we congregate and have fellowship at church within the facility. Is it through your sentence that you knew God, or it was before you came here? I have known God while I've been in here. That is the truth. It is within these walls that I gave my life to the Lord. Otherwise, outside, I concentrated on drinking alcohol. The warders have taught me to go to church and pray. I used to smoke, but have since stopped. So what do you think God thinks about people like you that kill other people? God is a God of signs and wonders. And so he shows you the way to repent and change your life. I am a testimony. I never used to know God. But here I am. I am able to go to church. And if I don't pray, I really do not feel nice. So... I give my thanks to the chaplain for his encouragement and teachings. So Mukankala, when you are in your cell, what goes on in your mind? What I think about uh, the most in my cell, it's um, about asking uh, forgiveness from the state because we are offenders, we are convicts, and also ask God to convince, to, 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 to forgive us um, so that maybe our life sentences can be commuted to years. News and con life. Tell me about life here, Mo prison. We are kept well in here in the correctional facilities. We are taught different skills. Even if you didn't know how to do anything. Um, they teach you how to make chairs, uh, bricklaying, metal fabrication agriculture, and many other skills. So when you are released uh, back into society, you leave the correctional facility as a skilled and certified person, and you can even be employed. Judgment. Do you know anything about Judgment Day? Uh, judgment yes, day. Um, I know the Judgment Day. What, what do you know about Judgment Day? About, judgment day? about the Day of Judgment. On that day, one who does wrong on that day will be judged accordingly. Um, wrong doers will go to hell and the righteous to heaven. That, uh, to me, is the meaning of Judgment Day. So, so when you look at yourself, where do you think you will go? Heaven or hell? I will go to heaven because I confessed and repented of all my sins. All the bad things I used to do out there, I have since stopped. I am a new creation. And I believe that God has forgiven me and shall be, uh, and I shall be going to heaven. If someone were to kill your remaining children, would you forgive such a person? Me, yes, I can manage to, to forgive him. Are you saying her. the truth? Yes, from the bottom of my heart. I know that even if um, they were sentenced, Government doesn't come uh, in the correction of facility to kill them, but to reform them, and that is why I too can forgive. Because I know that uh, they made a mistake. And even if it was intention, when you are brought here, you are transformed and corrected. The government will sentence him or her and place him or her in a correction of facility. Because that person is not fit to be with people in society for that period of time. So, I can't be stone-hearted, but to forgive as well. You've obviously followed some of the people that have been pardoned after killing others. Yeah. How does society receive them? Well, stigma is real out there 
for people that have committed crime. But society has to be educated more on the need to accept them as they are part of their community. One, because when they come here, they don't go back as the same as they came. The time they, they may have been admitted, they would seem like um, uh, they are not remorseful. But when we take them through various skills, training, counseling and so forth, they come back to their senses and realize that what they did was wrong. And when they go out in society, will have done a groundwork to inform society about their reformation. They will have gone through counseling, that, like I've mentioned. They will have gone through confession. Most of them would have met the chaplains to counsel them spiritually and so forth. So by the time they are going back into society, they are reformed people. Society still would have uh, those negative tags about them. But as they live with them in society, they will realize that really they are reformed. How much success have you scored with your program? Well, I would say we are slightly above 50% because uh, a number of, um, though I wouldn't give a specific number of uh, families that have come and that have reconciled with the offenders, but we are on a, a right path. And you, having interacted with those that have come to say, well, they have forgiven each other, yeah, at least there is progress made so far from the time this program was instituted. But, much to understand. but do you understand that you spend the rest of your life here? Yes, the state can do that. But uh, they are keeping me, they are teaching me, and even if they said I shall never leave these walls, there is no problem. There is life behind the bars. The state is keeping me and teaching me skills at the same time. So when you wake up, you see the sun rise and later it sets. How exactly is it for you in here? And then you see birds flying around. The same way we live when we are outside is the same way we live while inside. There's a lot of peace and freedom in here. As inmates, we spend our time chatting. Do you follow any current affairs? Yes, because now we have been given TV sets and radios, so we are abreast with what is happening outside. What's the latest news you heard? Ah, uh, the news I heard, though I slept, is the news that happened in Kawe. There were some people making phone calls on political issues. Do you know the current president of Zambia? Yes, I know him. Before him, who was there? Mr. Sata. And before Mr. Sata? Mr. Rupia Banda. Do you know the president of America? As of now, I don't know. But I knew the one who was removed. Which one? Mr. George Bush. Mr. George Bush. Yes. Which football team do you support? Here, I support Liverpool. <laughs> Why Liverpool? That is the team I support. Was it before you came here? Here, inside, that is the team I support. <laughs> do you follow Zambia's football? Yes, I do follow it. What's the latest you know about Zambia's football? That game between Zambia and Algeria. I watched it. The results were 3-3. Uh -huh. Okay. But do you know that Zambia hasn't qualified for the Africa Cup? As for the results, I thought they would play Zimbabwe. But from there, I got disturbed and couldn't fall. So every time I entered my cell, I would sleep. So, how is it like in here when Zambia wins a match? I feel very nice and as inmates we celebrate that Zambia has won. So you follow events. So when we haven't qualified for the Africa Cup, how is it like in here? Even as we complain because uh, as a country we have not qualified for the African Cup championship. Uh, but we... But when we go, we are equally excited. So... For all the years that were spent in here, 
What are your happiest days? What makes me happy um, is when I go to church, especially on Sunday. When I pray, I'm very excited because when I'm at church, I should not be upset. And after my prayers, I am free and always happy. And what makes you sad? What makes me sad is when I look and think about my life sentence. I tend to think that I will die within these walls, and that is what worries me. But thank God when I pray, all those worries are forgotten. But what we think about in life is if they can give us a number of years so that when we save the sentence, you can be released. That is the major issue that worries us a lot. Sure. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Inok Mepu, and you're watching Studio Ken. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube.